Hello everyone. Next program is computation of sine x using Taylor series. So the title of the program is to design and develop a C program using functions to compute sine x using Taylor series approximation. Compare your result with built-in library function, the function which is available. Print both the results with appropriate message. For this, we'll be using do by loop. Now let's have a look at the syntax of do by loop. The keywords are do and while. Do followed by curly braces. You write the statements that you want to execute, provided the condition in this while expression is true. So till the condition or till the expression is true, all these statements will be executed. The moment this expression turns false, you come out of this loop. That is how do while loop works. Explanation using flowchart, which will make the idea more clear. So this is the do while loop body. These are the statements. Statement one, two, three, n are all written here. All these statements will be executed once. For the first time, it will be executed. Then the condition will be checked. This is the condition that you have written with while expression. If this condition is true, the loop will be repeated again. This will keep on repeating till the condition is true. The moment this condition turns false, it comes out of the loop. That is how do while loop works. This is the formula of sine x function using Taylor series x minus x cube upon 3 factorial plus x raised to 5 upon 5 factorial and so on. Two things to note here. All the terms that you see are odd terms. You have 1, 3, 5, 7. Also, have a look at the signs. The signs are alternating. Initially, the first term is positive, negative, positive, negative. So when you're writing the code, you have to keep in mind that you have to generate odd terms and the signs should be alternating. Let's have a look at the program now. Okay. This is the header file that needs to be included since you also have to use built-in sinex function. So I'll be including math.h void main your entire program will come between these curly braces okay we will also be using pi so let's make it as a global constant let's define it hash define pi you can give any name followed by value please make sure there is no semicolon there is no equal to sign hash define followed by any name followed by the value so throughout the program wherever you will use pi pi everywhere the value will be substituted by 3.14 okay now we will be requiring degrees from the user you will be asking the user to enter the value in degrees and you will find sign of that degree you will calculate the value and print it on screen so int degrees as and when we use variables we will keep declaring here printf ask the user to enter the value in degrees store it in respective variable percentage d and percent degree. You need to convert degree into radians now. So convert degree to radians. How is this conversion done? So let's say x is equal to degree into pi. This is the value that we have defined here pi so degree into pi divided by 180 whatever value the user has given 
multiply by 3.14 divided by 180. This is conversion of degree into radians. So this will be floating point type variable. So I'll say float x. Okay. After that, if you have a look at the formula, the first term is x. The numerator is x. The denominator is 1. This we will hard code it. We will hard code the values. So let's take the numerator as x. The denominator as 1. So numerator and den denominator also needs to be declared. Next. I have a variable called i. I will explain what is the use of i. i is a variable which is used to compute the denominator, the factorial, 3 factorial, 5 factorial, 7 factorial. So i will be using it for computation of these denominator values. Let's initialize i to 2. So i is again an integer type of variable. Let's start with do while loop. So do followed by while condition. You will have while condition here. While ends with a semicolon. Please remember, while condition ends with a semicolon. Okay, so what do you want to do? What Which block of code do you want to repeat? You want to calculate the different terms. So let's take a variable term. This term is nothing but each uh, value here can be called as a term. So the first term is x upon 1. Second term is minus x cube upon 3 factorial and so on. So initially term is numerator upon denominator. So numerator is x, denominator is 1. So my first term is ready, numerator upon denominator, x upon 1. Now I have to calculate the remaining terms. So for the next term, what will be my numerator and what will be my denominator? So since I have used one more variable here, term, I will declare it as float only because there is division involved. Okay. For the next term, I have x with me currently. For the next term, I require x cube and a negative sign. So my next numerator will have minus followed by current numerator into x into x. My current numerator value is x. So x into x into x will give me x cube. And this negative sign will make it minus x cube. So I have generated my second term. Now let's generate the denominator of second term. I have 1 with me. I require 3 factorial. Value of 3 factorial is 1 into 2 into 3 which is 6. I already have 1. That is the reason we have declared i as 2. So let's see how we can generate the denominator. We will write it as current denominator into i into i plus 1. So this will be 1 into i. Value of i is 2. So 1 into 2 into 2 plus 1 which is 3. 1 into 2 into 3 is 6. So we have generated the second term minus x cube upon 3 factorial. Now we need to calculate the sum. So sum is equal to sum plus the term which you have calculated. Sum is again a variable which needs to be declared. Let the sum be 0 currently. So initially the sum is 0. Then as and when you keep calculating these values, you substitute the value of x over here and calculate the terms. So the answer of all the terms will be stored in variable sum. Now i value also needs to be incremented. So value of i will change to i is equal to i plus 2. So for the next term, how it is being generated, we will trace it. What should be the stopping condition? The stopping condition is f absolute. This is finding floating point absolute value f followed by term f absolute of the term 
till it is greater than or equal to 0 0.00001 till it is greater than this value the loop will continue the moment this value becomes less than 0 0.00001 you will come out of the loop finally print it new line the sign value of percentage d is percentage f so the first the first value percentage d will come from the variable degree and the second value will come from the variable sum one more printf using the built-in function the sign value of percentage d is this now this will be using built-in function this again comes from variable degree followed by the built-in function for this is sin sin x sin x this comes from math dot h and using end the closing of uh, void main save your file compile it with dot c extension once the compilation is successful run the file okay suppose the value of degrees is 60 then the sign value that you have computed is 0 0.865 and the sign value which has been computed by using built-in function is 0 0.865 this is the output you can try out for different sign values sign 0 sign 90 sign 1 and so on let's see how this works we'll see the tracing of this program for this i have i'm using excel sheet I have these variables variable i, numerator, denominator, and term. Variable i, if you observe the value of variable i is 2, so let's initialize it to 2. The numerator initially is x, so let's put the value x here. The denominator initially is 1. Now, what is term? Term is numerator upon denominator. So, my numerator upon denominator will be x slash 1. The value of i is incremented to i plus 2. So, initially it is 2, i plus 2 will make it 4. My numerator will now be minus x into x into x. So, this will become x raised to 3 with negative sign i'll put the negative sign in bracket my denominator will now become current denominator is 1 into i into i plus 1 so it will be 1 into i initially i is 2 let's not put this value now so numerator is x minus x cube denominator will be 1 into value of i is 2 so 1 into 2 into i plus 1 which is 3 so my next term becomes minus x cube slash that is denominator will be 3 factorial similarly you can calculate it for the remaining values so next time value of i will be changed to This is x raised to 3 with a negative sign slash 3 factorial. Next step, value of i is changed to or incremented to plus 2. So initially i is 2, now the value will be 2 plus 2 which is 4. Next term, numerator is minus of current numerator into x into x. 
So this is the current numerator. Minus minus makes it positive. X raised to 3 into x into x will make it x raised to 5. Denominator will be, initially it is 3 factorial. This will be 3 factorial into 4 into 4 plus 1. So 3 factorial into 4 into 4 plus 1. which is 5. So 3 factorial into 4 into 5, that is how we will calculate it. This will give you the answer for 5 factorial. So my denominator term will become x raised to 5 upon 5 factorial. Similarly, the value of i keeps changing every time you keep calculating the numerator and denominator values and you keep calculating the term. And sum is nothing but addition and subtraction of all these terms. So i value for the next term will now be i plus 2, which is 6. So this way you can trace your sin x terms. I hope this was helpful for you all to understand. Thank you.